Let's get right into it. Joining us now, Dennis Gartman, the Gartman Letter Editor and CEO. Dennis, are you still bullish on the market? You know what? After last week's action that we saw in, in uh, first of all, in, in Netflix two weeks ago, gapping to the downside, and Facebook doing a face plant last week, when the generals get taken out and get shot, you have to be very careful. So I, I wanted to be bullish of stocks. They don't seem to want to go higher. The leaders are starting to turn to the downside. I own uh, some oil companies, but I'm hedging them with derivatives, and I think you have to be very careful. The, the, the fuel that has sponsored this, uh, the, this bull market for the last several years uh, had been the, the growth in the monetary aggregates, and the adjusted monetary base is now down almost 14 percent from its high. The economy is strong. It, continue, it might continue to go stronger. I can continue to see GDP growth at 3.5 or 4 percent, but without the fuel to sponsor it, I think you have to be very careful. So I was bullish. I think it's time to go to the sidelines. All right. To your point, uh, so the audience understands, in the first half of this year, of uh, the Standard & Poor's uh, S&P 500 gains, Amazon was responsible for 36 percent of it, Microsoft 18 percent, yeah. Apple 15 percent, Netflix 15 percent, Facebook 8 percent, and Google 7 percent. In other words, all of it. That's what you mean with the generals moving uh, to the sidelines. But today what we're seeing, though, is the tech under pressure, but financials are looking pretty good. A lot of folks are saying, hey, maybe they can step up, maybe they can provide leadership. Does it only have to be big tech, Dennis? No, it has to be big tech and it has to be... Uh regular manufacturing concerns. It has to be the banking industry also. Clearly, rising interest rates are going to be beneficial to the banking industry, but I don't think banks alone can do it on, can, can, can continue to take the market higher in and of themselves. I think you, honestly, uh, Charles, I think you have to be careful up here. Like I said, I own some Valero uh, simply because of, of some exigencies in the refining process that I think are going to become obvious over the course of the next year or so. But anytime I buy some, I'm buying derivatives to hedge that position. Banks will do well, but I don't think they have the strength to be able to carry the market higher as the, as the high techs have done for such a period of time. And I think now you've got a lot of people stranded in these high techs. If you owned Netflix, for example, in, until two or three weeks ago, you were feeling quite good. And now all of a sudden with a gap to the downside and an island reversal as the technicians will, will comment upon it, you've got yourself a problem. But by the same token, over the last 52 weeks, you're still up over 80 uh, percent. People in those positions... Do they sell here? Because, you know, it's been tempting to take profits throughout this entire rally, Dennis. And a lot of times people look back a month later, sometimes a week later, and say, golly, I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you I've been in that position a number of times myself, Charles. So I understand the, 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 the problems incumbent in that. But if I owned uh, Netflix and, and I watched the, the manner in which it is now broken down under its 50-day moving average, has gapped lower, the gap remains lower, as I've watched Facebook do what it did last week. I mean, you don't take 20% off a of stock of that consequence without doing real psychological damage. If I were an owner of those, I'd, I'd certainly reduce my, the size of my position. I don't, uh, clearly, I don't think I'd be adding to it. Let's talk macro for a moment. Uh, uh, yeah. you know, I, know you, I know for a while now your theme, investment theme, has been you know, own things that when you drop them, they hurt. Uh, they fall on your feet and hurt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I love that. You know, it's part of my theme, too. I call dirty fingernails industrials, materials. Yeah. But overall, overarching, what do you think uh, consider the biggest threats to the economy and the stock market? I, I honestly think that the, that the Fed tightening and the Fed's going to continue to tighten. We've got another two tightenings this year certainly going to happen maybe four next year. But more importantly, as I, as I talked about earlier, the adjusted monetary base, which is the, as I always said, the stock from which the broad soup of monetary growth is, is, is created, it's down 15 percent from its peak. Clearly, there, are, there is less money being circulated than there had been previously. The demand for that amount of money is continuing to, to advance. I think that's the greatest threat. Plus, then, add into it the, the consequences regarding uh, trade protection and tariffs, which I think are silly beyond belief. Uh, put those two together, reduced uh, growth in the monetary aggregates and the, the, the threat of greater uh, tariffs and pr trade, trade protection, and I think you have some problems uh, incumbent here. You know, it's interesting that I listened to you there because on, on the uh, GDP number, what I thought stood out was the final sales of 5% over 5%. Inventory's actually been down $30 billion because we know that's going to be made up, right? So uh, it, it looks like, yeah. uh, you know, the consumer's going to be there two-thirds of the economy, if, you know, maybe banks will start to lend. And, and velocity of money, i got to believe, will start to pick up as the economy moves higher. Well, velocity of money actually is beginning to pick up, thank goodness. It has been declining for almost a decade. And the fact that you, actually for the past year or two, you've had an increase in the, in, 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 the vol in the turnover of money, the velocity of money, which is a good thing. Let us hope that the consumer continues to be 
as resplendent in his buying uh, <laughs> uh, circumstances as he has been for the course of the past several years. But uh, if I, I think if you continue to put the downward pressure on the uh, high-tech stocks, that tends to do some damage to psychology. We'll see. Yeah. I've been wrong in the past. I've been right in the past. But right now, I think the problem is I think there's serious problems out there with trade protection and, and a reduction in the monetary aggregates that I think has to be consequential. All right. Also, uh, we should uh, note that uh, tomorrow, income and spending. So that'll be our next update on that, Dennis. I want to ask you and talk to you about Caterpillar. Yeah. Uh, record second quarter number for them. Operating yeah. profits are going to the moon. They hired yeah. over 10,000 people around the world, including 4,400 in North America. And they had confidence enough to raise guidance significantly. What do you make of that? It's impressive, isn't it? Caterpillar is one of the great international companies of the world. And, you ha and, and if I have to be if I'm going to be wrong about what I fear about the stock market and what I fear about the economy, Caterpillar argues the other side of the question. I, I, you have to be impressed by what you saw. Let's see. Let, let's hope it can continue. Let's hope that their outlook is, is what will prevail. I have my doubts, but you had to come away from what Caterpillar had to say today. Impressed. No All question. Right. Hey, Dennis, and we're always impressed with you. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll be checking back with you real soon. Thanks, Charles. Great. Right. Always an honor to be on. Thank you. Same here.